In the last two videos, we've been studying language endangerment and language shift. These are the processes where a language gets pushed out of a society. And in the case of an indigenous language, maybe intergenerational transmission will stop to the point where parents don't speak it to their children. Eventually, you only have a few elders that speak the language, and eventually everyone forgets the language. And maybe you think, well, we've got English, so why not just use English um, and let the other languages be? Of course, the members of those communities were, would energically object to this for many reasons, which we will analyze in this video. There's many reasons why we should try to revitalize languages, particularly indigenous languages. There's a few key arguments. For example, that languages hold a lot of traditional ecological knowledge knowledge about how planet Earth works. Also, if we have more languages, we'll be able to know more about human language, about the possibilities of how languages can be and eventually how they can be stored in the human mind. If we have more languages, this will also help us uh, safeguard more human diversity and probably also ecological diversity. And in this, uh, the more diversity you have, the more ideas we'll have for how to tackle the challenges of the world, of which we have many. And finally, and probably the most important argument, is because indigenous communities feel that their language allows them a way to express their sovereignty. The fact that they are uh, a nation separate from others, that they have their own history, and that they can have their own voice and project their future. So, um, linguists have tend to historically use the first three arguments. For example, that languages store a lot of traditional ecological knowledge. This is an example from a language from Russia called Toju. As you can see, these are all of the life stages of a reindeer, of a particular kind of reindeer. And as you can see, there's different words for each part of their life stage, from birth, second spring, third fall, whether they're stud or castrated. And what these words indicate is that the community has a deep knowledge about the life cycle of this animal and probably about the ecosystem that surrounds it. With this, there is a repository of knowledge about our planet, um, frankly, when we need it the most, where we need to stem the loss of, of species and uh, diversity in our ecosystems. The more we know, the more languages we know, the more possibilities we're going to see for how languages can be configured and for the possibilities of how humans can think about languages. For example, um, it, until a few decades ago, people thought that it was impossible for a language to be object initial, like Hishkariana, where you have object, subject, verb, until a speaker of Hishkariana pointed out that, that his language did have that order. It's just people, it's just linguists didn't know because they had never found such a language. So with each language that is lost, we lose one possibility to better understand the general phenomenon of human language. And um, revitalizing languages help us safeguard human diversity and um, just the different types of ideas and worldviews that we have. And also, by the way, as we saw uh, a couple of videos ago, human diversity and ecological diversity are correlated. So that could help us as well. All these reasons are important, but by far the most important reason is the one brought forth by community members themselves. They feel that languages allow them to express their sovereignty, their existence as a people, and that it allows them their own voice and their own history. As a matter of fact, erasing history is unfortunately what invaders have typically done. So the glyphs here are Maya hieroglyphs, which are a full-fledged writing system that was used in Mexico and Guatemala. When, the, when there was a contact uh, between the Mayas and the Spaniards in the early 1500s, the Spaniards burnt their books. There were thousands of books written in Maya glyphs, and uh, Diego de Landa, a friar there, tells us what happened. They used a series of characters or letters to write their ancient things and sciences. We found a great number of these books, and since we didn't find anything that wasn't a lie from the devil, we burnt them all, which made them feel a great sorrow. Imagine what you feel like if they burnt every book ever. As a matter of fact, in the present, we only have four Maya books. They're about history and astronomy, 
and that's how we know they knew a lot of astronomy but who knows what else was lost and all of these lang all of these books contained their history the way they viewed themselves as the people and their unique voice in the world as a member of the Maya community will tell you in the following video many times we identify with the glorious past we say I'm Maya I see Tikal, Copan, and various monuments, and we identify ourselves as Maya. But many of us don't speak our language now. Every day, it is slipping away. The Maya had guided explorers and rebuilt monuments. They had shared knowledge of their spoken languages and customs. Now, they wanted to reap the benefits of the decipherment. So at this uh, Mayan workshop in Antigua, I uh, gave a presentation about a hieroglyphic text and I showed how you could read it. And the guys came up to her after the paper and said, you were showing my hieroglyphics there on the screen. She said, yeah. She said, it looked like you could read those. And she says, yeah, we, we can pretty well read those now. And so I said, whoa, this is our history. They said, this is what they've always kept from us. This is what we want to know. Que es la historia que nunca this is the history they never taught me in school. It is very important because it is the history I care about. So, in effect, um, keeping these languages alive allows the communities to express their history, their genealogies, their traditions in their own voice and allows them to um, decide what to do with that voice and project it into the future. It allows them to um, say, I love you to their parents in the way they always had. It allows them, as in this poet's words, how can I believe the foolish idea that my language is weak and poor if my mother's last words were in Evenki? It allows them a way to connect with their families, to connect their communities, and to project their voices into the future. This is the main reason why we believe it's worthwhile to revitalize indigenous languages. In summary, there are various reasons why indigenous and minority languages should be kept as vital as possible, because they store traditional knowledge, because they provide clues about how languages are structured, and they contribute to human diversity. But most importantly, they allow communities a way to express their sovereignty.